So something different today. I'm going to be taking you through how to create a really simple motion graphics animation using Illustrator and then importing your graphics into After Effects. We won't be looking too much into the actual process of creating the graphics or too in depth on the animation side. It's more an overview of the entire process from start to finish. So let's begin. So we began by making the graphics in Illustrator. Now, normally what you want to do is make sure that each of the elements that you want animated are put on their own layers. But I wasn't sure how the animation was, was ultimately going to come together yet. So for now, we just created everything on one layer. So we've got some hills, we've got some water at the bottom below the hills, a sky and a sun. And now I'm just creating a reflection of the hills in the water so we know that it's water. And some really simple little trees to go on the hills to add a little bit of detail. And finally, some clouds. So now that we have all the elements we need for our animation, I'm going to go ahead and create all the separate layers for the separate elements that I need animated. So each of the hills will be on their own layer each layer of trees for the corresponding hill will have their own layer. The sun will have its own layer. Each of the clouds will be in its own layer. The water will have its own layer. And then each of the elements of the reflection will have its own layer too. A really helpful tip is when you are creating layers to ultimately be animated in After Effects, ensure that you name them. I see a lot of videos where people just keep their layers labeled as default layer one, two, three, four, five. When you come to creating really complex animations, even this, the amount of layers I've got is massive for such a simple scene. So you can see how they bloat really, really quickly. So just name them. When you bring all the elements into After Effects, it's so much easier to work with when you have labeled layers. So here I've opened up a new After Effects project and I'm gonna to go to File, Import, File. And we're gonna select our Illustrator file and import as Composition Retain Layer Sizes. And click Import. So now what you can see is After Effects has put all the layers from that into its own composition. So if we double click to open that up, we can see all our labeled layers right here. So now we can begin animating. So the idea was, as you've seen in the final result, was to get the hills animated in and then the sun pops up along with the clouds and we're done. So firstly, I just want to hide the layers that I don't need right now. So I'm just doing some adjustments of my layers here to put elements on top that I need on top. And we're going to animate the hills first. So let's just make those visible. So before I do that, I just want to amend the composition time to 20 seconds because by default, it'll keep the time that you had on the previous project. So let's just make it more manageable, 20 seconds. We probably won't use all of that time. Okay, so let's select all three of our hills by clicking, holding shift. So I've just pressed P on the keyboard to open up the position element that we want to animate. So with all the hills selected, I'm going to drop a position keyframe because the state the hills are in now 
is the end state. So I'm going to drag those keyframes to the point of time where I want the animation to end. And then we'll go back to the beginning of the timeline and we'll pull them all down so they're under the water. And that will be where the, where the animation begins. And then we'll take a look at that. So they all come up at the same time. It's just handy if, if you know that three elements are going to pretty much be doing the same animation, do them all at the same time for ease. And now I want to adjust each of these hills individually. So they're all starting at a slightly different position below. So when they do come up, it adds a little bit of interest. So that looks a little bit more interesting because they're at different positions from the start point. They all have to travel at different speeds to get to the same end point. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop three more keyframes just before the last three keyframes. And I'm going to drag these further down. So even though I have ease applied to my keyframes, to add ease, I don't know if I mentioned it before, is when your keyframes are first being dropped and they're all selected, press F9 on your keyboard and it will add a nice, just bog standard easy ease on your keyframe to have smoother beginnings and ends to your animation. But to make that a little bit more pronounced, sometimes I manually go in and I add my own easing. So dropping a keyframe near the end of the animation and then pulling them back to around the middle, find a point that it looks good. So that last few bits of the animation is slower. So they get there and then they ease up a little slower. Okay, so we're happy with the hills now. So now we'll do the trees. I'll select them all, press P to set their position, drop a keyframe, drag them to the end point of the animation drop another keyframe and then move the trees to where that you want them to begin the animation. So we'll just adjust until we get to a point that we're happy with. We'll drop a keyframe near the end keyframes, drag them in to add a little bit more ease into their movement. A little bit slow there so we'll uh, do a little bit more adjusting so now you can see some of the trees are in front of the hills and we don't want that so we know later we'll have to go in and adjust their position but for now we'll just get the timings right I'm just going to pull these in so they're easier to manipulate because the trees pretty much don't exist after this point of time. So I'm going to pull those layers in a little bit. And now I'm going to adjust the trees so they animate slightly different at slightly different times when they appear. And we'll see how that works. And now I'll just put each tree layer behind their relevant hill. And let's play it back. Ooh, so the trees are lagging a little bit behind. So we want to pull them forward a little bit. A little bit slow still. So we'll pull them forward again. And some more. So they're having a long way to travel. So even though they're halfway between keyframe one and two, they're not even appearing on screen yet. So they need to be pulled in a lot more. It's all about playing around and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking until you find a point that you're happy with. Sometimes this is what takes the longest time on an animation is your timings. Because if it doesn't look right, and you feel that as the animator, your audience is, you know, they're going to feel that too. So spend that little bit of time. So we're going to go on to our sun now and again, press P because we're only animating its position and we'll put the sun behind everything because it's going to come up from behind the hills.
So we'll drag our keyframe out because that's our end point, And then we want to create our beginning point. So we'll adjust the position until it's behind the water and the hills. And just check the timing of it if you're happy. Again, we're going to drop a little keyframe just before the last keyframe and adjust as necessary. Oh, a bit speedy. Pull that out a little bit more. Okay, so let's get the clouds in now. I think for the clouds we're going to keep it really simple. We'll just animate the opacity of the clouds. So we'll drag them into where the cloud animation actually begins. Press T for opacity. Drag out the end point as 100 and for the beginning set it at zero so those clouds will slowly fade in after the sun comes up. And again, just adjust as necessary. So when I was first planning this animation, I didn't spend a lot of time as I would do doing a professional animation to, to plan exactly what elements I needed. So I made a little bit more work for myself by putting each of the reflected layers into their own layers. And I plan to animate those by copying the keyframe of my existing layers, if that makes sense. But when I came into After Effects, I found there was a much easier way for me to just duplicate the original animation. So if that doesn't make sense, I'll take you through it now. So in order to do this, what I need to do is I need to select all my layers within this composition, this vector animation composition, and I need to pre-compose them into another composition. So I'll do that now. So now we have a nested composition within a top level composition. So now what I can do is I can add a mirrored effect to the main composition as it is named here. So we'll do that now. And as you can see, I can mirror all the elements from my original composition and all the animations that come with that, which is really, really handy to duplicate an existing set of animations. So now what I need to do is I need this water layer to be above my reflection. So I'm going to cut it out of this main composition, go back to the vector animation composition, and I'm going to paste the water layer on top of the main composition layer. And then I'm going to press T to get my opacity up and I'm going to bring this down so we can see the reflection through the haze of the water. And there we have it. So easy to get that reflection done once I came into After Effects and realized I didn't have to make so much work for myself. And I'm happy with that. You can go back and do slight adjustments if needed, but for the most part, that is a nice little short completed animation. So now all you have to do is readjust your timeline to get the timing that you need. We definitely didn't need 20 seconds of timeline. Render it out and you have a nice little animation. So sorry I didn't go deep dive into the graphics creation or go into detail of what I was doing on the animation side. This was more to illustrate how the process works, how Illustrator and After Effects can work together to make the whole animation process super easy for you. And if I decided I wanted to recolor the entire scene, I just have to go straight into Illustrator, amend my colors, save, and when I open After Effects again, all the changes will update in your After Effects file. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know guys, if you want more of the motion graphics side of things, let me know and we'll, we'll make some more. Until next time guys, take care.